Hi there and welcome to this week's Sunday Girl from the beautiful setting of the Caharnan Hotel here in Killarney. Well this is actually a very special place for this week's guest because she actually got married here only I think was it four the weeks ago? The 7th of July and I believe the weather was just like this just as like well. This. Glorious. It's always glorious in Killarney by the way. Everyone please welcome this week's guest, leadership coach, Linda O'Mahony Logan. We were born, I think I know you, professionally 25 years. And could you just give everybody a flavor of your career to date? Okay, so maybe firstly my background, I'm from Kerry, from Rathmore, very proud Kerry woman. Um, grew up in Ratmore, family of seven, five boys, two girls. Uh, work ethic was really strong in our house. I think we were all working at the age of 12. And by end of school, I wanted to go into business. So I started a degree in marketing and international languages in DCU. At 19, I became a mom. So a uh, ch slight change. And I moved back to Kerry, uh, completed my degree in the IT in Tralee, which is fantastic. Gave me my first job in marketing in Radio Kerry. From that, I moved on to working with uh, Hopkins Communications in Cork and Advertising. From there, decided I moved back to Kerry again and got a job in the Kerryman newspaper and worked with the Kerryman in a number of roles, starting off as advertising executive and moving on to um, sales and marketing manager for a number of years for the Kerryman and the Corkman. And then also worked with ESAT Digifone before it became O2 as business development manager for Monster for them. That was a really interesting uh, role. And then in 2008, when the country was going into recession, I decided I'd become self-employed because I was pumping in probably about 70 hours a week. And I thought, well, maybe I'll do this for myself. My timing was really good because I decided that um, where a lot of middle management were being taken out of organizations, I went in um, for creating a sales strategy for surviving in recession. So I worked with media companies in Ireland and the UK. So that was great. At that time, I also went back to learning. 2007, started a coaching diploma, loved it. I really got a, an appetite for understanding people, personality, how we tick. So I went and became, as I call myself, a course junkie. At 2013, Farmers Journal, one of my key clients, and their um, new CEO, Justin, who I'd worked with previously, said, rather than being our consultant, how about you come and join us as sales director? So I said, yes, I'd do it for a year, moved to Dublin, stayed there for six years. Um, absolutely loved that because at the time, as you well know, Orla, media was transitioning. So mm -hmm. uh, it was a wonderful opportunity in managing a huge change project from newspaper only to a a whole digital platform. digital platform to support my learning. So I continued and I completed a master's in leadership and management practice in Smurfit. Then in 2018, I decided I needed to come home I, in my 40s, single thinking, you know, I want to go home. Uh, what do I want to do? So I moved back to Kerry and uh, decided that I wanted to go back to being self-employed. So thus began Leadership 360. Wow. So think is that sometimes the certain events in our lives that form character often in our personal lives and they build resilience which gives us strength mm -hmm. and I know you mentioned there that you had Oshin when yes. you were 19 years of age can't have been easy being a single mom but it was a scary time mm -hmm. I guess I was really lucky had amazing family and friends who were really supportive and a few months before my 21st I learned that uh, Oshin uh, was has a learned disability and we were told in Crumlin that he may never walk, talk or go to school. Okay. And yeah, and that, imagine what that's like for a parent. Yeah, when I look back now and you mentioned resilience and I, I thank my son for my resilience today because, you know, he defied all the odds. Mm -hmm. You know, at that time this, in the neurologist, Dr. McMenamin, I'll never forget him in Crumlin. He was amazing. He was superb with Oshin and I guess today, 28 years on, Oshin has defied the odds. Yeah. And for me and the work I do, I guess I believe in the power of the mind and, you yeah. know, mindset and what we believe in the internal narrative because he did go through school. You know, he talks. He did more. walk, he did talk, he, did he went yes. through school. He yes. lives a great life. He lives a great life. And some yeah. people would say to me that sometimes in my desire to make him independent, I might have overshot the runway because, 
He's very independent. <laughs> After I had Oshin, I had a lot of chronic pain and I ended up in hospital a lot in my 20s. I would have chronic pain in my stomach and very often it come to the end of a few days and they'd say I was at one of these inconclusive cases. Mm -hmm. And then um, in 2012, I, when I moved to Dublin um, for the new role, I had to do a medical and I went to Blackrock Clinic and without doing any assessments, the consultant said, you have uh, cysts, you potentially have fibroids and you have endometriosis. Weeks later, a cyst burst um, while I was at work one day and then began the journey where um, coming out of hospital, the consultant who moved the cyst said, no, you don't have endometriosis. My pain continued, went back to different consultants, had four procedures, which I thought were, you know, taking away the endometriosis. Mm -hmm. And uh, each, each procedure meant I was out of work for two weeks. So you're really conscious of the stress and you're mm -hmm. a mammy of, of a little boy getting to a place where I'd been with one consultant and she said you've had four procedures maybe you might have to come to terms with psychosomatic and I sat there and cried and I said are you asking me to consider if it's in my head and an endometriosis expert um, from Birmingham he talked about that a lot of consultants that what they do with endometriosis is ablation um, which is where they laser it to reduce it okay but you need to go to a, an expert who um, works with excision, which is removing of it. Okay. And I was sitting there thinking, I thought I was already having it removed. Done for those four separate procedures yes. that you had. Yeah. And I wasn't. And um, he said very often that what consultants will do, because it's a complex surgery, will say that maybe it's psychosomatic. Right. And I thought, he's talking to me. So I put up my hand and I said to him, so if I go to Birmingham book a flight, will you remove my endometriosis? And he said, yes, I will. So it's really taking something into your own hands as well. You know, I, I you, you knew something was wrong. Don't you, put your life, your health, your career in anybody else's hands, but your own. Correct. Yeah, yeah, I believe the same. Yeah. yeah. Truly and I think it. we came from a generation that was just dying out then, but that if the doctor said it or yeah. the priest said it or the teacher said it, you just believed it. You never mm. questioned it. You never got a second opinion. I mean, mm. that would be considered just wrong. Where now the right thing to do is, I believe it, my granny said it to me. She said, always ask questions. Questions absolutely everything yes. except nothing at face value absolutely and that is what you did and that is why you are well today yes i went to birmingham and had my surgery he did say to me that uh, at the time i was 45 still hadn't come to the place i was in a new relationship wasn't sure if i want to have more kids he doesn't look 45 <laughs> guys you gave your age away there. I mean, we spent ages. A little bit older than forty-five. We spent ages there trying to, <laughs> trying to hide it. <laughs> you look amazing, I'm even Linda. Older now. <laughs> we'll get to your secret later. <laughs> he said he removed the endometriosis, but if I didn't have my womb removed, uh, it may come back. Okay. Three months later, uh, COVID arrived, and lots of things happened in COVID for me, like my business disappearing in twenty-four hours, uh, my health getting challenged again, and I learned that it did accelerate in my womb six months later. And I couldn't go to Birmingham this time because uh, I'd have to isolate mm -hmm. if 14 days before mm -hmm. or 14 days after it wasn't possible. And the consultant was amazing. Between him and my doctor, they found an amazing consultant in Dublin. Okay. And I made peace. And in August 2020, I did have the uh, hysterectomy, which was very okay. successful. And uh, yeah, I've been in amazing health since and I'm really thankful. And I guess today I say to everyone, you do not have to live with endometriosis. People who say to me, this is for life, it's not. Keep going until you get to source and don't give up. Listen, as a woman talking to another woman, that is a powerful story. And even for a woman to have a hysterectomy, mm. it's, it's, it's such a big decision. Mm -hmm. But today, today you are well. Today I'm very well. And it's funny, when I was having the hysterectomy beforehand, people will tell you all the stories. So people saying, well, you'll put on lots of weight. Uh, you'll be very depressed. You know, you have all these things. And mm -hmm. me being me, you mentioned research earlier. I went off and did my research. I have a really strong community of friends, of business people who support me, of family. I've read all the books. I was watching the podcast. So uh, 10 days uh, after I joined Slimming World, I got myself an online trainer. I was so paranoid. You're, you're so driven though. I mean, that's like, well, you would just spend the time in bed watching whatever Bridgerton. No, I wasn't going to have any of the things. So, so don't listen to what people say. Just go after it and... Uh, so ask questions and don't listen to what other people yes. say. But in moderation, both. So Linda, you set up Leadership 
360 what about six months before COVID so I think then everybody needs to know this so if you're going to set up a business you only set them up before kind of crisis yeah <laughs> so you set it up before the worldwide international recession in 2008 and then bingo you set up another one six months before COVID <laughs> yeah, if, it, if it was easy it would be boring or exactly everything is an adventure tell me how did it first of all what inspired you to do it and what happened so when I moved back to Kerry, I was saying, OK, I was one of these people, I was doing all these courses and I kept talking about, you know, one day I'm going to go back to having my own business. And I, once I, you know, graduated in this and graduated in this and I had a supervisor and she said to me, you know, when are you going to start taking the lead role in your life and stop playing the, playing the support role? And I was like, wow, she's like, you've all the courses completed, you have the experience. You, you can blend the experience, you can blend the, the education. How about you go away and think about that? And I did. And when I set it up in August that time, it was really exciting. I got to work um, with a friend of mine who already had a leadership business set up and worked with some of his clients. And that was great for me. It accelerated my business. So I've started to work with wonderful international clients you know, who are going to take me all over the world. And and then in 24 hours uh, in March 2020, I watched email after email as my business just disappeared. And I remember being at home saying to Aaron, uh, all my work just disappeared. And he being self-employed came home two days later and was like, now my work is gone too. In terms of positivity, I found a lot of my work is around communication, around you know, building confidence, around you know, being positive. I started reading my own manuals. Good. Good and girl. said, yeah. okay, Linda, maybe you need to learn what it is you teach and preach. And Skillnets um, deliver a lot of leadership programs for mm -hmm. them, said they would run a pilot program and we would run it online. Did the leadership program with a group of managers nationally and it was really successful. It was a real okay. help to them. And, and this is like six months after COVID began, yes. was it? So this is like, yes. okay. So, so we're like now... Still 2020. Still 2020 yeah. and it started to take off and... Then I met with a friend of mine who is um, a HR director in a national company and she said, you know, maybe it sounds really interesting, the programs you're running. Maybe we'll look at running it for our leaders. And we created another pilot program uh, that went really well. And now we are probably 12 or 13 programs in wow. online. So post pandemic it's incredible. and the program took off uh, globally. So now roll on to today, August 22. I have the gift of uh, early morning. I work with a lot of organizations, work with organizations in Singapore, work across Asia. During the day, it might be Europe. And then in the afternoon, it's uh, very, in the evening, very often it's the States. And I'm doing it all from my office in Killarney. So you are virtually and sustainably yes. <laughs> globetrotting. Yes. And you are running such a successful, successful business, this interview. Yeah. What is your approach to the work-life balance? Work-life balance is a myth. And I passionately believe that. And I learned actually for me that, you know, I talked for years about going to the gym and I'm going to do all these healthy things and self-care. And I realized actually, it's actually about the integrated life. I had my work calendar and no other calendar and work was priority. And it was about, okay, rather than trying to fit everything in is what do I need to fit in? And creating that one calendar in the integrated life. So that if something is personal, so if I need to get my nails done, that's mm -hmm. self-care piece. Correct. That's in my calendar. Okay. You know, in terms of priority, mm -hmm. and you know, I'm delighted that more and more, if you look at all the research now, it's saying to not self-care is what's selfish. Okay. Because okay. when I don't self-care, yeah. it you know they call it emotional leakage. Okay. You know, where other people will it'll impact other people. Okay. When I do self-care, you know, and sometimes it's taking 15 minutes is one percent of the day. Yeah, so this I is know. what I'm talking about. Amazing interview. Um, for, by congratulating you. I know you tied the knot and you, you look like the happiest. Like you have that glow of love off you. I'm so jealous. Um, you tied the knot there about six weeks ago, <laughs> right here um, in the gorgeous Carnan. Tell me a little bit about the man of your dreams. Oh. So Aaron is uh, definitely my soulmate and uh, the most wonderful guy for so many reasons. He's a uh, He's a gorgeous soul, we I mean. are so lucky. And we got married here on the 7th of July. And Emer, the amazing GM here, I, I said to her all year, we're gonna have the outdoor wedding. It's like, we'll have a plan B. <laughs> and we had the fairy tale wedding. To Emer, though. <laughs> Emer even turned on the sun. <laughs> and probably I should say to give Aaron credit as well, where I reinvented myself in 
pandemic, you know, he was doing accounts for a lot of construction companies. He also was out of his work and he went and recreated himself. He's a gifted carpenter. So to pass time, he built a log cabin and realized, actually, this is what I love. I'm in my 40s, he's in his 50s. We reinvented ourselves and I suppose that's what I'm passionate about. Yes. It's not about age, it's about the support. You, mm -hmm. you know, it's about mindset. And self-belief. So what can do, it's yeah. about self-belief mm -hmm. and backing yourself mm -hmm. is really, really important. Yeah, look, that is a powerful way to end this interview. Linda, thank you so much for thank being you. my guest on Sunday Girl. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share one of my homemade cookies with Linda. <laughs> As I said to Linda at the outset of this interview, is I'm not uh, great at all in the kitchen, but I do love cooking sweet things for stress <laughs> relief. So I'm going to share with you one of my cranberry and oat cookies, and we're going to munch away on those, and we both wish you the most wonderful week. Mm.